In recent months, discussions about the Philippines' plan to develop an indigenous fighter jet have begun to draw public attention. The idea emerged after the government reconsidered the purchase of F-16 Fighting Falcons from the United States, with efficiency in mind and a desire to build self-reliance in the defense industry. The proposal surfaced to redirect the F-16 procurement funds into a domestic fighter jet development program. However, a major question arises. Is the Philippines truly capable of doing it? The context behind the decision. The Philippines had previously expressed interest in the F-16, a proven aircraft that has served as the backbone of many U.S. allies' air forces around the world. But with a price tag reaching hundreds of millions of dollars per unit, Excluding long-term operational and maintenance costs, serious financial concerns were raised. Rough estimates show that a package of 12 F-16 Block 7072 units could cost up to 14 billion Philippine pesos per aircraft, or roughly 168 billion pesos in total. This figure does not yet cover pilot training, infrastructure, and spare parts inventory. If such funds were redirected to an indigenous fighter jet development program, the Philippines would have a solid starting point for building a national aerospace defense ecosystem. Yet, developing a fighter jet is far from just a matter of money. It requires high-level technical expertise, advanced industrial facilities, an extensive supply chain network, and years of dedicated research. Estimated Development Budget The experience of other nations shows that developing a fourth or fifth generation fighter, jet, demands massive initial investment. For example, South Korea spent around 8 billion US dollars to develop the KF-21 Borome, while Turkey allocated over 10 billion US dollars for its TFX Khan project. These figures cover research, design, testing, prototype building, and early production. For the Philippines, starting with a 4.5 generation fighter in collaboration with a foreign partner could potentially reduce costs to 2 to 3 billion US dollars, roughly 112 to 168 billion pesos. While still a substantial sum, this is not impossible if funded in stages through multi-year budgeting and with the help of private sector investment and international defense partnerships. Human Resource Readiness the Philippines already has a community of aerospace engineers, technicians, and skilled workers, most of whom are engaged in aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul MRO. Several local companies, such as Dorney Technology and Asian Aerospace Corporation, are experienced in maintaining both civilian and military aircraft. However, designing and manufacturing a fighter jet from scratch demands a far higher level of expertise. The country would need to expand its human capital through overseas training programs, partnerships with foreign technical universities, and technology transfer agreements. The presence of overseas Filipino workers OFWs, in the global aerospace industry is also a significant asset. Many Filipino engineers are employed at major companies like Boeing, Airbus, and Lockheed Martin. With the right incentives, these professionals could be encouraged to return home greatly accelerating the country's technological development, technological and infrastructure challenges. Developing a fighter jet requires specialized facilities such as large-scale wind tunnels, advanced avionics testing centers, precision component manufacturing plants, and final assembly lines. At present, the Philippines lacks a defense aviation industrial base comparable to fighter jet producing nations. Additionally, Components such as high-thrust turbofan engines, ASA radar systems, and advanced avionics are generally imported from technologically advanced nations. The Philippines would have to decide whether to develop these components domestically, an extremely costly and time-consuming endeavor, or to rely on licensed production and integration of imported systems. Possible Strategic Approaches the Philippines does not necessarily need to start entirely from scratch. A realistic approach would be to pursue a joint development project with partner nations such as South Korea, Turkey, or certain European countries seeking to expand their markets. Through such collaborations, the Philippines could focus on producing specific components, final assembly, and integrating weapons systems tailored to the Philippine Air Force's PAF requirements. 
An initial step could be the development of a lead-in fighter trainer lift aircraft, serving as a stepping stone to a full-fledged multi-role fighter. This approach is often adopted by developing nations since it is less complex and costly. Once sufficient experience is gained through lift production, the Philippines could transition to developing a fully capable combat aircraft. Long-term benefits. If successful, this project would bring tremendous benefits to the national economy and defense capability. The aerospace industry could employ thousands of skilled workers, reduce dependence on imported defense assets, and raise the country's overall technological capacity. Furthermore, the Philippines could become a supplier of light fighter aircraft to Southeast Asian or African nations with limited defense budgets. Risks and realities. However, the risks of failure are significant. Many fighter jet projects in developing nations have collapsed due to funding shortages, technical hurdles, or excessive reliance on imported components. The Philippines would need to ensure political and financial continuity for at least 10 to 15 years, as such a program cannot be completed within a single presidential term. From a military standpoint, the Philippines must also balance its short-term defense needs. Redirecting all funds toward a long-term indigenous program could leave the PAF without a modern fighter fleet for the next decade. A common solution is to procure a limited number of new or second-hand fighters while simultaneously building domestic aerospace capabilities. Conclusion The Philippines' ability to build its own fighter jet is not impossible, but it requires meticulous planning, substantial funding, and a phased strategy. The country's human resources hold promise, especially if bolstered by international technology transfer and the return of Filipino aerospace professionals from abroad. The greatest challenges lie in securing sustained financing and developing adequate defense industry infrastructure. If the government can manage risks effectively, secure long-term funding, and tap into its global technical diaspora, the Philippines has a chance to make history as one of the few Southeast Asian nations to produce its own fighter jet. Still, the journey will be long, filled with challenges, and will require strong political consistency and public support.